How you doing, Jim? Haven't seen you in a while. I'm doing great. <laughs> so, um, again, my name's Robert Kratzky, and my company is Best Tech. And what I focus on people is helping them use their computers more effectively. And the, the biggest thing with that, and the biggest thing that we all use is Microsoft Office. Okay. So, um, just try to see if we make it a little, little interactive. Can anybody tell me what uh, Office 365 is? A pain in the neck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else? Yeah. Seems oh, like God. every time Microsoft puts out a, 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 a new um, program, it it takes away so many of the things well, that were so good on the previous one. Okay, that's right. I agree with that. <laughs> okay. Well, Office 365 puts everything in one place so that you have your Outlook. You can have Microsoft Teams. There's all different. Uh, ways to use it, and it all works in one place, is my understanding. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good, good input uh, and feedback. So, what the key thing is now moving forward with Microsoft 365 is there's no more updates that you have to do. You don't have to buy a new version, right? They're making you buy the same version every 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 month. You're buying the version or every year, whichever way you you do it. Um, but they're going to continually just keep updating things and adding in more features, more things to hope, hopefully make our lives better. Unfortunately, sometimes it just makes it a little more confusing, right? There's a lot of cool things in, in Office, but there's so many things that you can't find them. You don't know what the hell to do with them, right? And that's why I help companies is figure out how can we use, what, what do we need? Uh, because really every company, every individual, every department, everybody has different needs for what you do, right? You know, somebody might do some Excel and they might think they're in advance to doing Excel, but they can't do other, you know, other basic things. You know, it's about doing your job. And that's really the big, big focus of it. And what would help people with Office is to figure out what do you need to do to do things better? Okay. Uh, and typically we think about Office is Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Outlook, right? Well, these tools, these are all still there but there's many more new tools that are extremely powerful and we're going to take a look at some of them. Uh, Sandra mentioned Teams is one. That's one that we'll, we'll get into. Uh, Teams is a combination of, it's a video conferencing tool. You might hear some people saying, I'm going to, we, we like Zoom. We don't want it. We, you know, compared to Microsoft Teams or WebEx for other ones. Um, you know, Teams does do video conferencing, but it's a much more broader program. And we'll, we'll take a little look at what that does besides just having just having a meeting like this. It's the power behind the whole platform that, that, it, that it brings into it. Uh, so, so let's uh, kick off first by just jumping and taking a look at Office 365 and what's all the things that you have once you have 365. And we'll look at some of the cool new, new tools that are extremely powerful and show you what a uh, couple of things I've done with it and some things that you what you can do with it as well. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right. So if any any questions come along the way, please you can we can we don't have that larger group here. Please just pop in and make comments or questions or whatever it is as we go along. Okay. All right. So. Getting into Office 365 is uh, just basically just going on the web, office.com, and you log in with your, your password, email and password, and it's going to jump you into a screen that looks something like this. Okay, This shows all the tools that, that you have available. Right? You'll see here Outlook, Word, uh, OneDrive, Excel, PowerPoint. So these tools are all available to you whether or not you have it on your computer, where you're at. You could be out on your, out, well, I don't know if anybody's gonna go on a cruise ship anytime soon, but if you are out anywhere or out on vacation at a friend's house, any, anywhere you could log into a computer, you have access to all your files, all, all your folders, all your files, okay? You don't have to be on, it doesn't have to be your computer, okay? So everything is available on the web. And just to show you a quick look at it, I click on Word, all right? It looks very similar to the Word, the full desktop on the Word. This isn't on my desktop. This is just, I'm just on the internet, 
and I have access to everything here. Uh, you'll see on the home page here, um, I can add new documents. I have templates set here on the top if I want to open up something new. And then and below that, well, recommended documents. These are things that you've worked on recently or maybe people on your team worked on recently. When you're connected for your company, much more things become exposed so you can see who's working on things uh, within your groups uh, and certainly only see things that you have uh, ability to access, anything that you have rights to. Uh, Robert? Protected? Yes. Ro Robert, did you, did, so, you, did you have to set up, a, I guess, obviously a password and a, a, you know, so I have 365. I didn't know I could get onto it through, so. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's your email password. So when you set up your email on, if you set up Outlook on your desktop, you set up email and password to log in. Robert? Yes. Robert, so when you save your file, does that get automatically saved to the cloud as opposed to on your hard drive? Yeah, when you're on the cloud, typically it will, it will generally save it back to the cloud. We can op open up something. I'll show you how, how we'll, we'll save it here. Let me just finish it. Just look at this one open screen, and then we'll look at saving. And again, it will typically, I'll show you what it does by default, and then you'll see where you have choices of what you want to do from here. <clears throat> so uh, just to scan down. You also see these are recent documents that I've worked on in Word. Okay. They make it accept. Typically, you're going to work on the same documents you probably worked on yesterday, right? So all the re recent things that I've worked on here in this tenant will show up right here. You can also pin things. So that means maybe you have, you have a monthly report that you do, right? Um, by the end of the month, it's going to get buried down the list. If you pin it, so you says pinned here. And if you just move your mouse along the middle, you see the little pin popped up here in the middle. And I can pin it. And then it will show up in the pinned list here. So it will always stay there. So I don't ever have to look for anything important. You can pin it right there, or you can go back and unpin it here. You can also search it by name, correct? Yeah, you can search it as well up at the top right here. Right. I can search for, a, for, search for a document as well. But these will show you things, because typically, again, when you're working, typically you're working on the same things the next day, right? We're picking up. So it makes it easy to get to um, get the things there, All right? Move this out of my way a little more. Um, also, you'll see here more things in OneDrive. OneDrive is your online storage. If anybody's used Google, it's Google Docs, or, right? Google Drive. Uh, Microsoft has OneDrive. You have Dropbox is another tool, right? Box. These are all online storage things. Microsoft is called OneDrive. So all your, you have access to all your OneDrive documents. You can click on it real quick and show you my OneDrive documents. Yeah. Now, I have OneDrive you know, in, you know, in, in different computers, but you're saying it's actually on, I could get it online as well? It's on every computer. Wherever you log in, you can get uh, access to it all. Oh, I'm on recent, you know, okay. my files. So I clicked on, on the left side, my files, you'll see recent here also. So this is my whole OneDrive here. These are all my folders here. And I'm just logged online. I'm not logged into my computer. Okay, um, if you notice up top here, right from OneDrive, I can start a new document. New document, new folder, I can create a form, a web form. Uh, I can upload something to it. I can sync it. Syncing it syncs this to my desktop. And I'll show you what that does, I'll click to my desktop. So here's all my folders online. If I click sync, it's gonna create, when you follow a couple of steps, you file, just follow the directions, click on it. I'm clicking on my folder down at the bottom. You know, we you search for all your documents. Everybody's seen the Windows Explorer here. Gonna, all right. Along the side here, in my folders, when I did sync, I got OneDrive for GlobeNet Training. It created that link to my computer. <laughs> so everything in OneDrive is accessible from your computer. You see, it's all the same folders that were on the other page. Flow Solutions, RJ, Sugar, EC all the same things that were on on here as well. So it's completely, completely synced up to my desktop. So I can access everything from my desktop and drag and drop folder, so, you know, anything into a folder. 
if I grabbed a file that's here, Flow 4, and I dragged it over to OneDrive, it would drop it into OneDrive and it would be up on the web. It'd be accessible from anywhere and everywhere. Just like you regularly, you know, save things on your desktop from here, you can save things right to your OneDrive right from there. Okay. And if you notice also, I have a personal OneDrive. So if you have a home edition, you have a personal OneDrive. Uh, so just a little distinction with some of the things we're seeing here, we're going to be, we're looking at the business version of OneDrive, of uh, Office 365. Okay, so uh, with the business version, I have a business OneDrive, so it's tied to the company. Everybody has a personal, what, what can get a personal OneDrive for free. Um, but with Office 365 business, you get a business version of OneDrive, okay, which is again tied to the comp company ownership. Can you get onto the web with your documents in the home edition or just? Yep, I have them right, right, right here. Right this, here. Is, this is all in the cloud here. This is my home uh, version of it. And if I logged into you know, OneDrive with my personal email and password, I would get my personal OneDrive. I'm just not 100% clear yet how to um, set up that, um, you, know, you know, that, that online. Yeah, well, again, if you, if you log in, again, you can go OneDrive.com, you can get to your personal, you log mm -hmm. in with the username and password, and if you have, uh, and if you log into Office.com with your, your business one, you will get all your business applications. Yeah. Robert, this is Fred. Um, somebody asked the question, if you make a change on a document uh, on your hard drive, will it upload to, refresh and upload to uh, OneDrive automatically? Sorry, I'm breaking up a little bit, Fred. I couldn't hear that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Somebody asked a question that if you update a document on your hard drive, does it automatically update in OneDrive? Yeah. So again, if as long if you if it's a document that you're saving mm -hmm. to your OneDrive folder here, whether it's your personal one or oh, wow. your biz, business one, it will automatically update it to the cloud. Okay. You have to save it though to the right. You have to save it to that folder. To, uh, to your OneDrive folder, okay? If you've opened it from your OneDrive folder, it's automatically gonna save it back to the OneDrive folder. So you don't have to do anything if you're opening it from there. It will know where you took it from and it will automatically wanna put it back to the same place. So we'll take a look at a doc, doc I'll open a document and, and we'll uh, take a look at how, what, it, what happens as, as you're saving things. Robert, real quick, I have a question yep. on docking the um, the OneDrive onto the File Explorer. Yep. If you're using um, a Mac or a Chromebook or something to that effect, how would you manage that? How would that work? Robin, you seem to be muted. Okay, so sorry, my my, my video, my voice and, and speaker went off for a second. Uh, so you mentioned about um, onto a Mac? Yeah. Yeah, so just understanding how you would dock that, um, that OneDrive into like the file explorer, like the Mac version or the Chromebook version. Yeah. Is it possible for both of those? Yes, again, I, ha I haven't done it recently, so I forget okay. what you do with it, but you can get it through there and it, and, and it does sync to the, um, I'm not sure about like the file explorer, it, it probably does, but definitely on your Word, your, your internal Word in Excel in, in the Mac mm -hmm. and those, it does sync up there where you access it. So it is, it does do it, I just don't uh, recall specifically. Tell you how to do it, I can tell you how to do it in the Finder. You just um, take the folder you want and you kind of drag it over to the left. You stick it in between and you can see the difference. If you stick it over in between, it just makes a shortcut there. If you actually drag it over and it doesn't look in between, it sort of does another copy. So just drag the folder over to the left and make sure it's in between two folders. You can tell and let it go and, and you've got um, yeah, and that, that's once you sync it, though. You do have to sync it first. It will yeah. sync to Finder. But if you go through, when you go on, go in uh, OneDrive okay. and, and hit sync, 
it's going to walk you through doing it. Okay, perfect. They have an, uh, so it, it will it will happen kind of automatically. Okay, uh, so you just Thank follow you. directions there. All right. So let's op open. Let me open up a, a document quick, and uh, okay. Uh, if you want to get to any any different uh, application when you're on the online version. The little waffle in the top corner, you click on that and that opens up to all your application, lets you jump around to whatever application you want. Okay, or if you click the office one at the top, that just gives you the full list again. But again, I have all my documents and stuff here, different recent things. So let's open up. Uh... Open up the PowerPoint here. All right, so if you open it, you're working in a document. I opened it. Um, this was saved in, in OneDrive. It was a recent document that I that I worked on. So that's why it was shit, right? It was accessible, it was on my list. So it means it's saved up in the cloud, okay? So if I make any kind of edits here, And now it's, when you're on the cloud, it's actually automatically, it will automatically save things. If you notice up the very top, it says saved. As I'm working, it's saving automatically. Okay, so you, you, need, to, you need to be careful when you go on and you make changes to documents, it will automatically save things. All right, if you want to create another document, you know, another copy, you need to save it as a copy to work on a new copy, right? As you, as you work on the web, it's going to automatically update things for you. Right. So if I want to save a, save it as a copy or save a new one, click on just like you would do in the regular uh, desktop version. We go to save a copy. Okay, save a copy online, and it's going to ask you where basically where you want to save it. Here's the it's automatically saving it back to the ACM folder under Robert Kratzy ACM. Uh, if that's not the folder I want, because this is where it came, the original came from, right? It's gonna automatically have me put it back to the same one. So I just need to put a number two, make it a second copy. I can either save it where, where it is, or I can hit save to another folder, and then it's gonna let me go through my list and find another folder. Second, right? So I can pick another folder on OneDrive to save it to instead. Okay. So it lets you go through and, and put somewhere else to put the document. Let's cancel that out. Okay. Uh, if I'm opening a document or looking for it, or actually let me create a, create a new document here. I'm gonna go to new. pulling up a blank document and we're going to save it for the first time and show you how we have options of where we want to save this, right? So I uh, created the document. I want to save it now. And it basically goes, works, works the same way here on this document. I'll show you the difference on uh, on the desktop. We'll show it better. What I want to show you where you have the options of uh, getting to all your different folders. So let's minimize this and open up PowerPoint on the desktop. Okay. So this is the desktop version of PowerPoint. Actually, if you notice here, uh, I the edit that I made happened. This is the same document that I opened up on the web. And I made a change there and it automatically changed it on my desktop version. This was open on my desktop, okay? I was on the web on a different, 
with this document open up on the web. And when I change it on the web, it changed it on the desktop automatically without doing anything. So it's synced up, it's synced back to my computer. It synced my physical copy on my desktop to what changes I made online. And if you notice right here, there's a little green dot here. I'm still open on the other page and I'm still in the document and it's showing me logged in here. Okay. Uh, part of with Office 365 also, if we were in a team or if I shared this to you, you could make changes also. We could work on this document at the same time in real time. Basically, I'm working on it with myself in real time, once on the, on the web and also here on my computer. Desktop. Let me go online. Flip back online again. Where did I? Okay, I'm going back online. I'm opening this up online, that same document. And you're gonna see the change I just made on the web on the desktop should show up here as well. Robert? Yes. I just want to clarify, this is goes back to my original question. And that is that when you work over here, you have to set it up in advance or make sure that the files get saved to your desktop. It does, uh, I understand by default, it just stays in the cloud. It does not go to your desktop. Is that correct? Well, but again, when I was on, on online on the cloud, it's gonna to save to the cloud by default automatically. Okay. When you're on, right, on but I'm desktop. Saying, but, I'm, but I'm saying it will not, def by default, it will not save to both places automatically. Well, it, it kind of does because it's synced. So it automatically, if you save it in, into OneDrive, you have it, it's available on your desktop. So the, so or as you're working in the cloud, it'll automatically get synced to your desktop. Yep, so let me sh show you this here. So I'm, I'm in OneDrive here now, right? I'm clicked on OneDrive in my file explorer. Here's all my folders here. If you notice the status here, there's a cloud on most of these. Yeah. Okay, it means it's actually physically stored on the cloud but it's listed here. So all I have to do is click on it and I get it. Okay. The ones that right. have the green dot are actually also on my computer, a physical copy. So the point I'm getting at, if you have something here that shows you that it's only on the cloud, then you do not, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the circle, the check mark. If it's just a cloud and if let's say for some reason you lose the internet, then you don't have access to the file unless Correct. you originally synced it then you can go to your desktop and just work on the file on your desktop until you get the internet back correct right so that means so again most of our documents we don't use right or we ra rarely use them so we don't necessarily need them on our on every computer that we're working on and and the way things are these days most of the time we have internet connections almost anywhere we are right even if we only have our phone we can make our phone a hotspot and we're on the internet. So we have the capability pretty much of getting on from anywhere. But if you're going somewhere to do a presentation, you're not sure if they're gonna have internet, you don't wanna, you wanna be able to count on it, you wanna make sure to have a copy on your laptop. And all you do is right click on whatever item and there's a thing always keep on this device and it will make it always stay on the device. So I can, let me make go to this IMC monthly meeting. I'm gonna right click on that always keep on this device and now it's syncing it up and now it's green now it's always on my it's on my computer live so even if i'm not on the internet i have it if i go on a plane i can work on this document and when i get off the plane it's going to automatically update it so it would just be good practice that no matter what you're working on you always have it synced to your hard drive or yep. to your desktop and like I said, you don't need it on the computer. It can be on the cloud only, because I have access to it, as long as you're gonna be on the internet. And most of the times we are. Uh, certainly if there's something critical, make sure it's saved to your desktop. Right click it. Or if I go uh, uh, view online, that makes it an online only document. So I'm gonna click on view online. 
Oh, no, that opened it online. Sorry about that. The wrong thing. Back to that. Um, okay, so the view online is going to make it an online only document. Next time I go here, this should oh. change. Yes. No, what I know. Did someone have a question? All right. So, um, with, with these documents and, and with, with Office 365, and especially again, when you're in with, in with a company or even working with other people, the key thing is about sharing doc documents, right? You have the ability to work on documents with other people or share documents with other people. Um, so let's say, for instance, uh, so, Let's open up, uh, we'll go back to the same presentation. Don't need to open anything else. Okay, let's say I want, I want to share this presentation with a client. Maybe it's a proposal, right? I have all the inf information in it, okay? So I want to share it with them. The way we've typically done it is we send an email and we attach it, okay? When you send an email and it's attached, they have another physical copy, right? It's like having two pieces of paper, right? You had one, you handed them another copy. It's a completely different copy. Ouch, ouch. Okay, so with that copy, right, they can do anything they want with it, right? It's, 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 it's you know, they, they have control over it. It's, it's done. If you make any change, let's say you change, make changes to your price list, right? Next month, month, monthly prices change. You have to now send them a new document, right? If instead of sending them the document, you actually just share the link to the document, you give them rights to come see it on your, where you're into your cloud, where your folder is kept. You're letting them see your document if you share it, okay? If you share it that way, when you make changes, they will automatically get the changes, okay? If you ever send out a proposal and a minute later you should, oh my God, I forgot to add something, right? You can now make the change and add it and when they open it, they will have the changes, right, automatically, okay? Uh, Robert? Yes. Um, so can you, you give them certain rights for them to, uh, if you don't want them to make changes, you can give them their certain rights. I'm Correct. That's you, you get your one step ahead of me right here at the top. So I'm going to hit the share button on the top in all the uh, office documents. You have share. There's usually a button at the top, right? Or you can also go through the file menu on the left and the share is, is over there as well. Gotcha. But typically right on the, on the document here is share. Yep. And when you hit share, it's going to give you the choice of how you want to share it. <clears throat> okay. Again, if it's a price list, do you want the customer changing the price list? No, you just want them to be able to see the price list. So right here, and the choice is anyone with the link can view it. So right now, if I send it, they can view this pr presentation, but they can't do anything with it. They can't make any changes. Okay. If I click on the button, I get more choices. Do I want anybody to see it? Only people in my organization? Only people that I've already given access to? Or do I want to just send it to specific people? Okay. And then I have allow editing. So if I want to send it to specific people and I want to let Jerry edit it, I can click allow editing, specific people. We're going to hit apply. And now it's going to say, who do you want to send it to? question. I'll send it to myself. Yeah. And I can put a note in or down here, you can instead send it through Outlook directly. Right. So this is going to send it through Outlook and it'll be noted in, in your Outlook that you sent the email. But if you want to send a regular message in Outlook, you know, to add in different things, you can click on send an Outlook. And it's going to open it up in Outlook with the rights that I gave it there. So here's a link and it's in Outlook. So now I can write the rest of my message around here. Okay. Um, while we're in an email, um, okay. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm on, this is on the web. This is the web version of Outlook. 
here. Um, so Outlook has a lot of add-ins to that you can connect in here. So I'm going to click on the dots here at the end here. And I have a lot of things that I added in here. One here down at the bottom is templates. My templates. Click on that. And you can actually save templates. So if you have a proposal you send out all the time, you have a certain email you want to send all the same content, you can save it in your templates right here into, into Outlook. Right, it opens up right on the side here. And um, double click on it and it drops the template right in there with all the formatting, and everything that you did prior. Okay, so you can send your messages out really quick. Uh, you know, especially things like a proposal or something, you can save it, you're gonna send off and write the same content out there and you can add it with the, with the link. Send that really quickly and is um, so actually this is I think this is the desktop if we go to the online version have that look open here somewhere uh, new message this is outlook online Down at the bottom, the dots before on the regular Outlook it was on the far right of the dots. I click here on the dots here. All these extra applications are available. Here's my, my templates. Can again, you show me again how you got to that template? These same templates are on, yep. These same templates are online and and on the on desktop, desktop also? Yep. So where would where would I find the templates on my desktop again? I, I, I didn't see where yep. you clicked on. So here on the website, it was on the dot, there's dots at the end of it. When, when you're in a new message, these three dots gives you all the added things that you can do. Okay, um, I added in a bunch of these things. I'll show you what, so whoops. So here on the web, at the very bottom, you see it says get add-ins. These are all add-ins. These are all additional little programs that are connected into Outlook that you can attach to your Outlook. I, Any of them are free. Okay, there are some things that are, there's cost to certain things, but these get add-ins and there is lots of add-ins for Outlook that does lots of different things. So if you have Salesforce, BlueJeans, uh, Cisco, Translators, Planners, Adobe, uh, all to do digital signatures with, with Adobe. You have all these connectors in there. So these just, are all things that you can add into, add into Outlook. I'm just having trouble finding on not on the web, but on my desktop. On the desktop. That template. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in my email. I'm in my emails. So you need to go on. Um, so here's the desktop. The I'm on the desktop, and this icon here. This is on the home tab. Okay. There is add-ins. You need to add them in before they're going to show up. They'll show up on the dots here. On the home, I got a home. You gotta, it, you gotta put the add-ins there first. And again, if you scroll through it and look through it, you might see things that you, programs that you already use that you can connect in. A lot of the different CRM systems you can connect in. Uh, Go to Meeting, Blue Jeans is another meetings kind of thing. Zoom is connected into into uh, Microsoft all over the place. I'm in my emails and I click on home and nothing comes up. I don't yeah. understand. So. Well, I can uh, offline can help you maybe figure out if, or if, you know find that. Okay. Part. All right. All right. So uh, let's let's move, move along and uh, get a look at some other some other things. Uh, as you're doing that, Robert, I have a question. Uh, yep. Actually, somebody posed a question. If they have all their files in Dropbox, uh, files and folder structure, can they move that whole folder structure from Dropbox to OneDrive easily or? What's yeah, that yeah, pretty easily. I think it's pretty, pretty much. I think you can just you open up both windows, your Dropbox and your OneDrive, and you can just drag them and drop them. Okay. There's also um, let me see if Dropbox. I think Dropbox might even be here as well. Let me so go to look real quickly here. Um, file. Okay. So. Um, 
I just clicked, I'm in Word here, right? I clicked into Open. Open shows you all the different places where I can get my documents from that I'm connected to, right? At the very top, my OneDrive, whoop, my OneDrive for GlobeNet, that's my company's OneDrive. Uh, SharePoint, uh, uh, that sites here is, we're gonna see Teams in a minute. Teams is a subset of the thing called SharePoint, which is where you, all your shared documents are. So it's in with the company, right? You have your OneDrive is your one, you know, it's your, you know, it's the, uh, Robert folder on the network, right, is now OneDrive. That's your personal folder. And then SharePoint or the sites or Teams is all, where all your shared files will be. But you can see I'm actually tied into four, I got four or five different companies here. I have connections into their OneDrive and their and the SharePoint sites that I'm a part of from here. I can also add a place and it does, I wasn't sure if Dropbox was gonna be here, but um, I think when you have Dropbox, Dropbox has connectors built to Office. So there, there are ways to go, leave it in Dropbox and get access things from Dropbox if you wanted to, but you don't really need Dropbox anymore with it. You have this here and it's much better connected if you just put it into OneDrive. Uh, but again, there are connectors to Dropbox <coughs> if you have that and you wanna keep it there or your company wants to keep it there for various reasons. Okay. All right. All right, we'll close it out and let's, I'm gonna take a, take a look at Teams, right? So, all right. All right, so we talked briefly earlier about Teams, right? Teams, teams is a, a meeting tool, right? That's one part of it. You might have, you, has anybody uh, attended a meeting in Teams before? Yeah. Okay. So it's very similar, similar to Zoom. Um, you know, the one limitation, it goes up to only nine, we can only see nine people at a time, where on Zoom we can see a little bit more amount of people on it. Um, but aside from that, most of the same features are in there and Microsoft is actually gonna go up to like 50 people. You'll be able to see it one time as well, just like Zoom, uh, they're adding in that left. So um, again, you can hold a meeting, just like we held a meeting here where you clicked on the meeting and you joined the meeting. Um, so just like you clicked on the meeting to join it, uh, we can do the same, you can do the same thing in Teams and just have a regular meeting. But the power to Teams when you have Office 365 is that there's a whole platform behind it. Why are you crawling on this number? So I'm going to put the pictures out of the way here for a minute so I can, okay. All right. So this, this is the Teams platform right here. I mean. And you'll see the multiple groups. I have a lot of teams here set up. Um, and in all these different teams are different different people, right? You may have your marketing team. You might have your the financial people. You might have the senior management. You may have. Robert, training, really I can have different conversations going on uh, about different things, okay? Uh, I have things about a client I did, Luna. I have things about collaboration, LinkedIn, different resources. So I've broken it up for my training materials in different areas. But this is a general conversation page. And it's like chat. This is text messaging. So you have Teams basically ties in text messaging it ties in your document storage. You see up in the top, we have the posts. Then we have files. And if you notice this, this looks just like OneDrive. Adding new things. I want to add a new document, right? Same things we looked at before. I can add them right to my Teams page. I can sync it. If I sync this page, this, this channel, here to my desktop, his office training general. I'll actually sync it and we'll see me sync this to my desktop. So I'm going to be able to access this team's files here on my desktop. Okay. Getting it ready to sync. Happen with it. And when I click over here, it's going to show up in my GlobeNet training. These are my different teams, these are my different folders 
that are gonna sync to it. So that, when I go through that process, it's gonna sync it right here and I'm gonna have a folder that's gonna say uh, Office Training Documents right here. This is, probably, this is it here. Click on it, Office Training. Here is Luna, Potential Resources Collaboration. Uh, so these are all, all synced up, all my documents. So I can get to these documents from here. 365 Luna, see if I have anything saved in here. Nope, empty. Resource materials. So I have a lot of things saved here. It's linked to my desktop. When I go back to my team, close that. Um, resource materials to this channel. See, he has more conversations about resource materials. And my files are here. All these files are synced up to my desktop. So I don't even have to go to Teams. If I want to get something in my team, I can just go to File Explorer. Okay. And I can also save things to File Explorer. I can drag and drop it there, or I can drag and drop it here. Okay, I can access these files from anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Okay. So, uh, all right. I'm open up another version of Teams. This is with uh, another uh, association I'm on the board of, New York Metro ACM. A um, lot simpler here, right? We only have two teams, only two teams here. And Again, you can get you different conversations through here. Um, so now the pat what happens here, this is set up for the board, okay? Yesterday we had our board call, our month monthly board, board of directors meeting. If you notice here down in the chat, this meeting is right here in the chat. Anybody can attend the meeting who's certainly in, they have to be in the board, they have to be able to get here, they have to have rights. But if you missed the meeting, you can come click on here and watch the meeting right here. Okay. And it plays the meeting right here. Okay. So the meeting is saved right in your whole environment. Uh, so nobody has to look for it. Everything about the board is here. Okay. Instead of sending emails back and forth, all we do is click on Teams, your Teams icon at the bottom of the screen. Right, click on it, it opens right into Teams. And now we can do our conversations right here. Add in whatever information right at the bottom of the chat. And I can attach things. I can put in emojis and stickers and um, these things here. This is my favorite little one here. And you can put in your captions and make your memes. And you can post it, post it right there. This isn't, this is another team, so I'm not going to post anything in here now. But all you do is enter it. You make your own little memes and just make make your communications a little more fun as you're going through it. Okay. Um, you can also use it mentions here at mentions. So if you put the at at sign, and you can notify people. So it gives them a little extra notification that the post in there isn't just for the group, but also specifically for them. So, Robert, I have a question. Yes. Um, I've never used this, so I want to. I opened up the Microsoft Teams, so I have yep. to download the app. It says, uh, "Do I want the Windows app or the web app?" Well, okay, so Windows app puts it on your desktop. So I have the icons here on my desktop that I can get to, uh, and there's a, a slightly more functionality, just a little bit more with about when you get to sharing your screen and sharing some things, but to access everything, post things do everything. There's a web version and I'll show you that too. If you look at this here, um, actually let's go to this one here. Um, just click on the main, main page here. Okay, so we see what it looks like here. And I'm gonna click on, on the web and we'll look at it on the web, same way. So this is on, I'm on the, uh, here. And okay, this is the other one here. Okay, so I'm clicking on the Teams here. This is on the web. Again, all you do is log in to office.com, click on the Teams icon, and here's Teams. So this is what we were just in before, right here. With the general tab, here's the meeting. I can attend the meeting, watch it. Um, also, when this meeting went live yesterday, 
the meeting opened up right here. All I have to do is go to Teams and the meeting is gonna be running. It's gonna tell you the meeting started, click on it to join. Okay, so here's the web version of it. And here's the desktop version. It looks exactly the same. So okay. how do you decide which one to use? It does, does it depend Whatever on- Whatever you what wanna you use. If, if you're on the same computer you're using all the time, put it on, do it, use the desktop app and it's to the bottom so you don't even have to go to office.com and find it. You click on it and you're, and you're there. Okay, if you're on something that's not your computer or whatever or different things, you, you would join from the web. So the Windows, use the Windows app. Windows app puts it on your computer. On, right. on Windows. Got okay. it, thank you. So, um, so when we had this meeting too, it also automatically created a meetings notes page. So all the notes to the meeting are here. All the conversations about the meeting are here. All our board documents are here. So you click on it here, all the meeting minutes all the financials, everything is here. And again, you only have access to these things if you have rights to it. So um, even within the board, the financial stuff is only available to certain people. Um, Robert, let's see. yes. I, I have a question. Can I? Can you go back and, and talk about the uh, add-ons to the Outlook? That's amazing to me. I never knew that. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, We'll uh, wrap back around to that. Let's finish on the, on the on, uh, some of the team's capabilities here, what we can do with it. Um, so again, key things, great things for, for, bo for boards. Um, I work with a lot of nonprofits who are using it for their, for their board meetings and stuff now. Because again, the meetings are right here in one place. And at the same time, all the financials information, meeting minutes, things like that. Because typically, again, every, especially when everybody's busy doing different things, you got to go back and look for the, for the board minutes, look for the flyers, the different things you're working on. They're all, you know, all over the place in, in, you know, to search through Outlook to find things. The amount of time that we spend looking for things is, uh, is, is amazing, right? You know, if you think about it. But here now, when you're in doing work on the board, all your board stuff is here. It's all in one place, okay? Same thing when you're doing your regular business. If you're in the mar marketing, you know, uh, department or team, or again, you you maybe you you everybody's got their own marketing department. Um, but let me go off into my teams here. Um, So uh, actually, I'll do it over here. Sorry. Okay. Um, the events tab. This is a private tab. Nobody. It's just me in here, so I can add this and then delete it. Um, so to add things here with within within your team, um, if you're going to be working on you know joining a, a marketing group, let's say I'm going to create a team here. Create create team. See how quickly I can create it. I'm um, just making a public team, giving it a name. Create it. Great, and it's done. I can add people to the group here right now. Okay, I'm gonna put in my personal email address. That's different than the, I'm, I'm in under a different email address now. Um, uh, all right, I'm sorry, I didn't add this. This team has it blocked, guests blocked to the board, right? If you're not on the board, you can't send it out. So I can't send it out to a third party. Um, so again, there's protections. I can't invite anybody to, into this team who's not authorized, right? But if I did, all I would have to do is send, put in their email address there if I, if I created an open team. And I could send that out to my marketing, the company that does my marketing, right? And now right here, we can share between us, share information and go back and forth. And, um, you know, I can upload you know, what a lo whatever logo, or he can upload documents there. And now it's in real time that we're working and all our information is right here. Okay. Um, if you're working on a project, have a moving company that's doing a big job with one of the colleges, they, they you know, 
a major project, moving things around and storing things or whatever. So they have a team set up. The, the school is invited into the team. So now all the communications about the project is right here in one place. Right? You don't have to look for it. You don't have to pull them out of, your, out of Outlook and save them somewhere else. All the files, all the folders, all the conversation, all happens right here in the team. Okay. Um, and if you are in multiple teams, um, on my page here in the top right, I click on my name, company name. These are all the teams that are, I'm invited to. So I'm in with other companies. Here we are, the ACM, uh, actually I'm, I'm a guest in one of the teams here. I can click on it from my teams, copy, and get into the other company, the one we were just in, New York Metro, under my personal email. I'm, I'm invited into, uh, invited into the channel here so I can make uh, comments here. And you see now it's bolded here because I just added a comment. This is back to the other copy of it. And the message was entered in here. The hello right there. Okay. All right. Now uh, you want to meet with your teammate, somebody on the team, even the other, other company you want to connect with right now. I can set up a meeting right here, meet now. And the meeting's gonna open up here, right here in the channel. And everybody on the team can join join in the conversation right here. And we can record it if we want, and it will be saved here. So think about a meeting, you got a kickoff meeting with a client. You're going over all the things about the project. If you record the meeting here, in a, a month or two, you, somebody new comes on the team. They have to get up to speed. You actually have the kickoff meeting there. Or the client tells you, no, we said we wanted this. You actually have a recording of it. You can go back. Um, and in the recording, you can actually, you can even search the recording and put in a keyword, whatever word was mentioned. Um, and it will go right to that meet, that sentence in the meeting and get you and, and search for it and pull it up in, in, a, in a second. So you can search and see the video and find out when they mentioned uh, you know, the, the library building, or what they were doing at the library in the in the move. So, okay, so you can have it recorded right there and have that be able to anybody to go back in and see it and communicate with it. Okay. Uh, and there's polling features and lots of things like that, which Zoom and stuff has that too, but you can do polling right within, uh, you know, right within your chat here or within a meeting. And those things will all be recorded as well. So we did a poll during the meeting, this little test poll here, and uh, the poll, uh, just the test poll we did. And that was done in the meeting and it shows up in the post, in the, ch in the chat. So it's um, all the communications that happen during the meetings are saved within the, within the chat as well. Okay, all right. And also if you I have another, there's a camera here and I have another camera here. This is Zoom. I can start a Zoom meeting or schedule a Zoom meeting from Teams, which sounds a little weird because Teams has meetings. But again, if you prefer Zoom, you can actually use Zoom while you use all the other features within Teams. Okay. And then there's lots of other things you can add in, all the tools and add-ins and different applications that we can put here. Okay. So Robert, does everybody have to have Teams enabled on their computer to be part of the team, or is it independent? So if I have, if I set up a team for three or four people, do they need to have Teams enabled, or can I just launch my Teams and have them join and do what I need to do? Well, it depends. Again, this, this, they can be if you, if they're part of your organization. Right, you would want to log them in as team, you know, kind of connected in the net in the network. And again, once they're they're logged in and authenticated, they can either use the desktop app, or they could just go on the web and go to go to Teams online, and get to it. If it's if you're talking about just attending meetings, anybody can attend a meeting. You just have to give them. It's if you send out a link that anybody can join, anybody can join a meeting, just like the Zoom meeting here. You have the link, you can join it. Right. 
So there's, it's, it's all a matter of how you want to use it, right? Do you want the, them to be in a team with you? Okay, so you want them to be in this events team with you. If they're part of the company, it's easy to add anybody in the company. Uh, if you want people outside of your company, you just have to enable teams to let guests in. And that's done on the back end. Once you enable it, then you, and you can say who's allowed to invite guests, just the owners of the team, or is, can anybody invite a team member, invite somebody, a guest? It's all right, it's all permissions that you, you, you level for it. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. So, um, so again, it's a great tool because again, even people who don't have teams, they don't have any license support, they don't need to be licensed to be a guest in your environment, okay? Um, they just have to be authenticated and it's sometimes a little bit of a pain getting, they have to have a Microsoft you know, login, it just takes a couple minutes, but once it's done, all they have to do is click on Teams and then they're in the team. So once they have the icon saved to the desktop, they click on it, you should only have to log in, you're already logged in, it'll remember you unless you, you log out and you click on it and you're in the team and you know you have all it's basically like chat right you tied in with your instant messaging all your chat all your files are saved here and uh, you know all, all all kinds of communications are, are connected um and you also get um back to my team here um along the side here you also have chat so you can do individual chat if you're in there in the group and connected, or even if you connected with somebody outside the organization, they will show up here um, in, in chats. Here's a Zoom. This is actually a Zoom meeting that is here, saved here in Teams, because I accessed it. I started this meeting right from 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 Teams. Okay. So again, there's a Zoom app plugin into into Teams. So here's all my my uh, things here, and meetings right from here okay so I can start a meeting here um, so again chat is individual chat just like on your phone right it's a group you can have group chats or individual chats and the teams are the ones that have your whole you know again a team connected to it okay uh, your calendar is here the calendar ties into your Outlook calendar okay schedule meetings here for the team or schedule a new meeting with it and again when you schedule a new meeting you can actually put it in a channel and that it will save it right in the Teams group or in the marketing group or in the, you know. So you can save it so it opens up in a specific place. And also, whoever is in that team is going to be invited to it automatically. You don't have to add anybody. If you just schedule it for the team, it's on the Teams calendar. Just by scheduling the team, you don't have to worry about who's in it or who's not in it. Um, it gets the whole group tied to it. Uh, Robert? Yes. That's question uh supposedly if, if i have i have a uh, what i call it to have my own uh uh what i call it to, i have teams uh, already on my computer okay i already have teams uh, i have an account microsoft account then i'm invited uh through another uh email i have okay is there a way of seeing both uh both of them or do i have to log off of teams on my no, computer when, when when you're in your team right Yep. on the desktop and up in the top right here, you're gonna see your company name. Yep. Uh, now you know Metro, where Jer Jerry's in this group too, uh, but that group, all my teams are here. That I'm, here's my main one, my company, and all the ones that I'm a guest as with the same email address. Okay. Right, if you're invited with a different email address, you have to open up and log in differently because it's a separate. Account. Yeah, that's, that's what I was wondering. But, but when you're recognized, when you use, if you're using the same email address, that you're invited to, all your teams are going to be in the same place. Gotcha. Whereas I have, uh, I've been invited like a, on a different email address, okay. and then I have my own, have my own from. Yeah. And if, if you have, if if that's the case, like I said, I'm logged into some companies privately as as an admin or something for the, in their account. Um, I'm actually able to save. I actually have two copies of Teams on my desktop here. One is the regular full version version of it, and the other one is actually the web app, but it's pasted it's pinned as an app on my desktop here <clears throat> so i'm able to access two different companies teams at the same time gotcha i figured so this one i'm logged in i'm logged in as one account here um this one i'm logged in as uh this is the acm account i have and then this is my regular globe net training account yeah here yeah 
that's what I was and, wondering. Okay. So you can access it, access it there. And, um, okay. So next up, uh, right. So any last quest questions on Teams? We'll get them. All right. So now this uh, I'm going to show you probably what's my- Just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, how much of this um, technology do, does one give up? Do I give up if I'm on the home edition as compared to the um, professional? Well, I, what we're doing that well, so team teams, you can get a personal license. You, you can get it for free, a free kind of copy of it. Um, it does have some limitations, but you can, can use it, set up your own little team if you wanted to you know, do something for it. But what I'm going to show you now is going to see where you're going to be losing with the home version and some of the things now. Next steps. So all this stuff up to now, the, um, the, the teams, templates teams. and everything I have in my home edition. Which, which part? The templates and all that other stuff. That yep. You yeah, you should. It should be. It's part of Outlook. It should be. Um, should be there as well. Okay. I would, wouldn't expect that wouldn't be. So, um, all right. So let me go back onto the web here. So we look at the other applications that are on here. So I'm back on the web version. If I go to again the waffle menu in the corner. Um, actually, one last thing I'll just show here. Uh, uh, fi the files tab here. Okay. I click on that. I actually right here from Teams. I can get back to my OneDrive. I can get to my Teams files. All my things, things here. Um, so there's lots of different ways to get to get to different things. Add cloud storage down below. I think that might. Oh, here's a place where you can get Dropbox. You can attach your Dropbox to Teams, or your Google Drive, or your Box. So again, you don't have. You can keep those accounts and just make them accessible here. And all you would do is probably log, log in with your you know, account information, and then you would be connected here and it would show up Dropbox under OneDrive or Dropbox. So you'd be able to switch back and forth to different things or your recent documents, some recent things that I worked on within Teams. Uh, I'm on the board uh, account here, so I don't have many recent documents. I didn't do much here in, in that team. But um, and again, you have the same thing. Uh, same thing here with the files. This is on my main account. So in recent, here's everything we were just we were just working on. This document we just opened up a little while ago, it's here. Things I had worked on yesterday, they were all here. All the documents. So again, right from Teams, I can get to all the files I've been working on without having to leave Teams and go anywhere else. So the idea is when you're working in Teams with all your, in your different groups and projects, everything's together in the same place. Okay. And uh, the last thing here, I'll just show here on the, on the top, I can customize what other things besides the post and besides the files, right? The meeting notes got created here because I had meetings here in this team. And then I might've clicked on it before, all these different add-ons and tabs I can add here. I can add a website. If there's a certain website that you work on while, while you're in that team or group, post it right here so you don't have to go look for it. Okay, it's just like customizing a whole website for yourself. PowerPoint documents, an Excel file. If you have your monthly file that you work or, or daily document you work on, pin it right there. You don't have to open it anywhere else. Okay. And again, there's hundreds of other programs from all different companies that can connect in here. You might recognize some of them, right? Zoho is there, Project View. Um, again, hundreds of programs. And if you connect these programs in, you're able to do things within right from Teams and connect to other information. Trello, some people use. Right? Uh, Cisco WebEx meetings, you can connect in here as well. Whatever you use, you can still use Teams to get to things. Box, okay. All right, so let's get over to back over here. Um, all right, so I'm on the web again, back to the, the dots here and these are what are the other programs. If I click here, all apps, it actually shows even more things that I have. I'm not gonna go through all of these things. Um, okay, to-dos is, is your to-dos in Outlook, to-dos and tasks. They're also adding a new thing called lists. It's another way to just access things. List is like Excel, but laid out a little bit differently and you can do it. And uh, it's gonna be a very easy thing to work with and create, create lists of things to do, lists of people, and things that you can update and, and uh, 
make changes to pull information out of very easily with uh, a tool I'm going to show you now is called Power Automate. Okay. Power Automate is a workflow tool. Lets you build a workflow. Okay. All right. So, um, who can tell, give me an example of a of a workflow that you might have within your organization. Mailing list. Okay. Well, what about a mailing list? What's the workflow? Trying to uh, get a list of, uh, you know, get their name, their, their email address, their phone number. You know, it's just uh, information. You're collecting information for for a uh, for me, for if you're gonna do uh, like a, uh, what do you call it, like a email blast or something. Okay, good. That's a great one. That's actually the first workflow that I built for myself, right? So think about, um, hopefully one of these days we'll get back to in-person meetings again, right? But think about think about when you went to the meeting, right? Your first first uh, LIASB meeting you went to, right? And you met 20 people there. You got 20 cards. Okay, you walked out of the door with those 20 cards and what do you do? You want to get them into a CRM or something. Or okay, uh, how, o how often do you get that done? Put them into your database, that's what you do. All right, people have a lot of trouble getting that done because maybe you went to that meeting, but you know what, after that, then you had another meeting to go to and another meeting to go to. And, you know, then the next day, I, you know, well, I didn't, didn't really get to it. And then finally, two days later, okay, I entered the information. Now, are you gonna send everybody, everybody an email? How long does it take to type out those emails? A long right, so, time. So a long think about, time. you have 20, 20 people and you type out, a, you send out 20 emails. How long is that gonna take you? Say an hour, two hours? Two hours, two hours. Right, so let's, let's call it two hours. And that two hours was maybe two days later, right? Because by the time you got to it, to get those two hours, you did it. And now you sent everybody an email. Okay, well, now what do you do? Now you gotta also put them in your, in your if you have a CRM, are you putting them in, in your CRM system? Okay, are you putting them on your mailing list? You're gonna add them to, to MailChimp or to Constant Contact. Okay, uh, of those people, 20 people, typically not everybody's is not important, but you saw you, you had a better connection with certain people, right? Maybe you saw an opportunity I need to follow up right away with, right? So are you following up with those people? Or do sometimes they get lost in the pile of 20 and because it's two days later, you don't, you don't get to them right away. Or that pile of 20 cards is still on your desk with about 8,000 other cards piled up because that was my house, uh, you know. I'd, you know, go out to lots of meetings, get lots of cards, and it's just impossible you're to get along the system. Robert, you're not telling us how you had, how you enter the board, the, the cards, you, right? One at a it's, time, right? Right. Well, that's again, that's what we had to do in the past, right? But with this tool, I took this time that took us multiple days to maybe get to it, multiple hours just to send an email. Think about all the time then to put it in your, on your mailing list, put it into your contact list. Put it on your, all the important people, put them on your to-do list so that you can actually get, make a call to follow up with them tomorrow, right? Or to have a follow-up call the following week. You put, you know, you sent them the email, but now you got to put them on your to-do list the next week, right? All this stuff takes a lot of time and we lose a lot of people that we don't get them in the system. Number one, we don't get it right away. So maybe there was a need, but you know what? You waited three days, they contacted somebody else. Or the conversation you had just isn't as hot anymore, right? You, 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 you clicked on something, but if you don't act quickly, you may not get that meeting. You know, they might not remember you. And they met 20 other people the same day. You know, and they met 20 more people the next day. And some of them probably did the same thing as you, right? So who got to them first? So this is how we get to them first, okay? So I'm going to my flow. I created a workflow here. Okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong company here. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
like so. Is this me? Okay, this one's me. Sorry. Okay, so click into Power Automate, and I go to my workflows. So I built a workflow. I'll show it to you in just a second. And what what happened now? I now have on my phone a button that I push. Okay, and that button opens up a form. And in the form, I enter the person's name, first name, their email address, uh, where we met, so at the LIASB, and I could even add in a customized note. Okay, and then I could also take a picture of the business card at the same time. How do you take a picture of a business card? What do you right do? on my phone, with the with the app. Oh. With 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 my with my iPhone or my Android, okay. So I'm going to show you what this workflow looks like. I'm going to click on. Ah, wrong one. So on my phone, I click a button and it opens up a little form where I can put in this information. Okay, name, email, yes or no. For me, that's a question to say, do I need to contact these people right away? So if you get yes, it will put them, it's all right. When I hit yes, it's gonna put them automatically on my to-do list. Okay, at the event, if I type in LIASB, um, a note and it, and it opens up a prompt to take a picture with my phone or the business card, okay? So what happens now, next step is, it's gonna automatically send out an email, right? This is in five, it's gonna take me about five seconds to fill this out. Fill out this information, um, take the picture and hit send. And what it's gonna do is automatically, they're gonna get an email right away. Nice to speak to you, right? Hello, first name, great to speak to you at the event. It fills in the information, LIASB. If I put in a little personal note, which even on my phone I can even talk it in, hit the, hit the you know transcript the you know talking button, and it'll it'll let me talk in the uh, the message, okay. Um, so this whole email goes out. It actually has a link to Bookings, which is um, I think I showed you this, this at a prior meeting. If you're there, Bookings tool lets people book an appointment on my calendar, okay, and and it fills in my name and and my my email address. And again, if this was for your company, this one form could be made for the whole company and it will pull in their information automatically with this same workflow that I built. You know, whoever is creating it, whoever is the one initiating it, their information is going to go into the email. Okay, so this goes out. So immediately, in five seconds, right after the meeting, this person gets an email. Custom email to them, to their name, a nice long email, made customized with a note. And again, if I met those 20 people and it takes me five to 10 seconds each, I'm done in two minutes. Instead of taking me two hours, two or three days from now, if ever. Okay, so that's done immediately in five to 10 seconds. We'll say two minutes for all 20 people. Okay. Next step. If they need follow up, if I hit yes, that means put them on my to-do list. Also could put them into a spreadsheet, create a spreadsheet. So all my contacts that are important go in a separate Excel spreadsheet. Okay. I can also maybe um, want to notify my manager or my team about this when things happen. So I can also at the same time post it in teams. I'm creating team, add to team, post a message in teams. Okay, and I just gotta see which team do I wanna post it in? And it knows all my teams. These are all the teams that I have. So I can post it in whichever team I want, whatever channel I want. So every time it's gonna post it here, and now also the information from the form, I can put in their first name, their email, whatever other information, the event, 
and body of the email that I sent out, all the information that I that I already included, I can pull information from these things, the date. Um, but this will now post in my team to let everybody know who I met at whatever event. Maybe you want to share that. Okay, so that can automatically be done as well. Um, other things we could do is at the end here, I want to add a new step too. Also, you mentioned the other thing you want to put it on a mailing list. Right. So right here I can go to MailChimp. Okay. Add member to the list. It's premium because you have to have a MailChimp account to do it. That's why it says premium. But anyway, I have a MailChimp account, so I can put in my information here and it will add this in here, right? My list information. I think I already have them already logged in for everything. Uh, but right. what the hell is a ma chimp account? What? MailChimp is like constant contact. Oh. Okay. So you put all your contacts in. But here, again, I can take the information from the form and put in their email address, right? Their name, all that information. So again, when I hit save, it's going to add that step in, right? So automatically, this person's contact information, right? This is, again, within two minutes after the meeting, right in the parking lot before I leave. All 20 people, custom message, added to my uh, MailChimp list. If they're important, they're already in my to-do list for tomorrow. Um, they get that email, and they have a link to book an appointment on my calendar in that email. And so the difference that is made is I'm, I'm, I was getting appointments. So the first thing other people got home from the meeting First thing they look at, if they didn't look at it while they were driving, is they see the messages they got. And they and I, I get so many messages, oh my God, I can't believe how, how quickly you get back to me. You know, and they're booking appointments on the spot. You you had to make up the letter ahead of time, right? The, the, the yep. email ahead of time. Yep, it's made ahead of time. So you plan you're planning ahead of time. But again, no matter what networking event I go to, it's customized, it's set out so it works for any of them. Right? Or you can put a second button on your phone and make and make it different for something else. So, Robert, basically, yes. this workflow starts from you creating a button, which is kind of like a, a form that you're adding the information in. Can that form grab the data from like a signature or an email and add it into this workflow? Um, yeah, yeah there, were way, there were ways to do that. Actually, the first one I clicked on had, there's actually a, uh, a business card reader. Right, so it actually does use this artificial intelligence to pull out all the right information and then basically put it into a spreadsheet so that you can use all the different pieces of information that it finds. Um, there, there is ability to, there are now new tools to train, basically tr train Power Automate to recognize, uh, could be a third party application. It can, like, it's kind of like a macro. Anybody knows macros in Excel where you program the steps to do? You can program steps into a third-party application and pull data out of it, something that doesn't even have any kind of connections or APIs, if you know what those are. But to completely third-party application, you can you can do things with it. So let me show you. So one way is to create a button, which which we did here, right? Um, what we can can also do is let's show you forms really quickly. We can do it from from a from a web form. So Microsoft Forms is just like SurveyMonkey, right? You can create different forms, okay? So I'll show you a form with what I'm building here for uh, this new company. They're going, everybody going back to work. They need to do screening of their employees, okay? So we create a questionnaire, okay? Uh, they put in their ID number, what's their name, answer a couple questions, and they hit submit. Okay, so now once they do that, then Power Automate kicks kicks in. Okay, go back to Power Automate. And I'll go to create and show you how we created it. Um, so again, there's different ways you can create a workflow. The first one I showed you was an instant flow from a button. So we've got a little finger on a button. So the button gets put on my phone that I can put in input manually. 
automated flow would be from like a form, the web form I just created there. I'm gonna click on automated flow. We're gonna give it a name, test flow. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna create it. When a form is submitted, okay, there's other things. When an item is created, SharePoint, different things. When you put a file in OneDrive, right? When I create a file in OneDrive, say it's an expense report. If I put an expense report, if I create an expense report, I save it into a folder, that can kick off a workflow, okay? But here in this case, this workflow is for the, uh, when a form is submitted, create it, okay? Now, what form? All the forms I created, go pick the form that I want. From that form, I have to get the information, form. Okay, I created a form. Now I have to get the responses from whatever form. Uh, okay. All right, and now I can take these responses and put it in Excel. Okay, I'm gonna update a, or actually not update, I'm gonna add a row in a, in a table in Excel. Okay, and now I can plug in, where am I gonna put it in Excel? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put all the information. Um, once I do it, you're gonna see a drop down. it's gonna have all the fields that are in the Excel file. It's gonna show a list of them once I pick, pick a file. And then it's going to let me put in all the information that I got off the form. All the responses in the form, I'm going to be able to fill into Excel wherever I want to fill them in. Okay. Um, I could post something into Microsoft Teams from the form. Right. If somebody, if they said no to a certain question. Um, let's say post. Post a message in Teams. Okay, did this show this before? I can put in what what team I want to post the message in, and it will pull it from. Here's all the questions from the form. So again, I can pull the person's name, um, what they answered to a specific question, right? person's name and, uh, and what information they answered to it. So a certain question, right? So now the team, the management team can be updated on, did, did they say they have symptoms for COVID? So if they have symptoms, they have to go home, right? So the next step you can add in, add an email message to the person <laughs> based on the answer to their questions. You can add these steps in. I could have added a step in here ahead of time, which I would do control and a condition. So that would be if yeah, yes or no. So based on a value, so choose choose one of the values. So one of the answers, right? Was I in close proximity to anyone? Okay. If that answer is yes, okay. If it's yes, now I put an action in here. If they answered yes, now we're gonna have to send them home. Right, so we're going to send a mail or, or use Outlook mail or a notification. I right? send them a notification to their mobile phone. Okay, and it will automatically text them, say, hey, pack up and go home. Um, you tested positive, we need to keep everybody safe and go home and it can have a link to uh, more instructions, right? Or we can add a second action to send them an email about what they need to do now that they tested positive. Right, what's the procedure they have to follow? So all these different steps can be added in and again, add in different actions if it's a no. I can say different things. Maybe just send a me message saying, hey, you know, thanks for filling it out. Uh, have a great day. So Rob, this sounds like you can create various actions integrated with existing Microsoft applications or third party applications. And you can design a workflow, whether you know, I'm getting an email or something, a form or whatever from, a, from one product, you can actually 
create a whole response and get it through a company, a system, shared with other products and services, simply right. with either adding a few pieces of information or touching a button. Yep. And again, the whole idea is that like within Office 365, it knows where everything is. It knows everything in OneDrive. It knows everything in SharePoint. It knows every knows the, the terminology and where things are located, right? So you can access everything. But then okay. all these third-party companies have built in connectors. So here's Twitter, okay? Rich Cruz is Mr. Twitter. So with, with, with Teams here, you can set up a, even in, a, say, Excel. Put a list in Excel of things you want to tweet out. So you could create things ahead of time, a list of tweets, okay? And automatically, over time, it could be set for every day, send out a tweet. And it will grab the next one on the list, and it will post a new tweet. Or when a tweet is posted, something can happen. If somebody posts, posts a tweet from someone that you're following, um, some stuff can happen. You see, well, there's some templates built out already, all these templates, right? Email yourself new tweets about a certain keyword. So when a certain word is tweeted, you can get an email about it. Okay? You can get a notification. You can get something to your phone. Um, you can post something to Teams about things with certain hashtags you can follow. Uh, post a list of items to Twitter after approval. So there's a whole approval workflow here. I'm going to go over on the left side. There's action items. We have approvals. So you can set up approval, like I mentioned, a uh, for an expense report. Okay. So say somebody sent you, you take an expense, fill out an expense report. You save it in the folder for expense reports. That automatically starts an approval process, and it gets sent to the to the appropriate manager. So these are approvals that I've received, things that were sent to me. Okay. To so approve this document. Okay. OneDrive document approval workflow test. So this was a, a something that was saved in OneDrive and it was sent to me automatically to be approved. I could just click here and approve it, or I can click on the link and it'll open up. Here's the document, the information. Here's a link to the document. So if I need to look at the document the, 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 uh, before I approve it, I can click on the link. Um, I moved this as a test document, but if it was a regular do document that I'd saved, it would open up that expense report that that was linked to. And, um, can that be and once I look at it, I can put in my response, approve, reject, or sign. So we're going to approve this one, hit confirm, and it approves the do document. Um, now, once it's approved, this is the last thing on that before the question. Once it's approved, now what happens when you approve a an ex the manager ex approves the expense? Automatically gets sent to payroll. So payroll now has the document with the form, and they can go ahead and prove it and get you paid. Okay. And as the person who created the workflow to start it, I could actually see if my manager approved it. I could see if the second manager approved it. Maybe you have to be approved by two people. You can create that whole workflow. And then once it's approved, it goes to payroll. Or maybe it goes to IT. Or maybe it goes to a different department to let people know. And a message goes back to you to let you know it was approved. So all these things happen automatically because it's the same workflow every time for it. All right. My question was, can it be triggered off of an email? So if I send an email with an attachment, in order to build this workflow, does the email have to have a specific word in the body of the subject of the email in order to trigger that workflow? Yep. So um, that'd be okay. autom automated flow. Same thing. You'd say automated, but from it from an email. Oh, okay. we have emails down here. All right. item is signed when a new email arrives. Create. Okay, and again, you just fill in the different information goes in. Excellent. Um, uh, I guess advanced options, I think, would be here. Yeah. So here it is. When it's from, who it's from, what it is, whatever things you're looking for. Um, and then once that happens, well, what do you want to happen next? Um, now you can also get it to look at things. So if you have a, a, a list comes in with, uh, you know, a name their customer number, invoice number, and then details about it. You can create a, a program so it can, it can read that email, basically, and know that line number three is the account number. So then that account number will be available to plug into the next step of the workflow. 
look at this account number in the spreadsheet and get out the value from row four of the invoice or the item number or whatever. So you can do lots of different things uh, from that. So outstanding. And I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people on this call today, just like myself, so, have uh, been exposed to a lot of different things that uh, can be done just by simply having yeah. Outlook or using Office 365. Yep. So let, let me show you one last quick thing here in Excel. I open up Excel document. Mm -hmm. This is part of a workflow for this is the moving company. When they, they book a job, they put in all the information, and then they get to the point they want to book it and schedule it, okay? So what would normally come out here is just the first few, the first information, bill lading number, the company and the consignee where it's being delivered to and any notes. And then they want to click on this little form button up at top. Now they have to fill in how many dollies do they need? What, what do they need to bring out on the account, right? What other things need to be on the truck to, to, to fill, fill, fulfill the job? When they finish filling that out, now when they have, I'm selected and I'm, I'm selecting the first row. I'm in the first column here, bill lading number 18133, right? Now I want to put it on the calendar, okay? There's a button here, flow, at the top. This is the workflow, Power Automate. When I click on that, this screen opens up on the right. Add to dispatch calendar. This is a workflow that was built for this document. So when I click that, it's gonna create this on the calendar, okay? So it's signing me into all the, all the appropriate things. Uh, you see Teams is listed there too, because after, it, after I run the flow on this, what it's gonna do is gonna put, this is gonna be on the calendar. This information will be posted on the calendar at this date on 6-9, that was uh, yesterday. This went onto the calendar and it also, updated teams, so teams was listed there, so posted it into the team so that everybody knows that something got scheduled, okay? Uh, and again, so this workflow is right from this spreadsheet, sends it right out to make something happen, um, right? You could send an email. If you, have, if you have a big list of contacts, you could use this, do a quick, you could do an email out of here instead of doing it from, uh, you know, it's like building a template, doing a mail merge but you can build a workflow to do it out of any, any kind of list uh, to connect it to. Or again, this could fill out a expense report. It could fill out any kind of documentation, onboarding documents for people. So if you have all your new, new employees you're hiring, one click and it fills out all the onboarding documents, customizes Word documents with their name on it, makes PDFs, emails them things, sends stuff to HR to, to get them set up, sends stuff to IT to get IT to set them up in an account. All this stuff can be done in one click. All right, Robert. We are coming up to the last 10 minutes of this session, so I wanted to give anybody a chance for a little bit of Q&A um, if they have any questions. Uh, if there's something in specific that you want to create, such as a workflow for your business or whatever, I'm sure Robert would be happy to talk with you offline. Uh, so anybody, you can unmute yourself and ask questions, and uh, let's take uh, the Q&A. I guess a, a comment, a question that I might have is there's so much information in 365 and so many um, um, programs. I, I guess I'm confused, you know, um, Microsoft kind of forced me into 365. I'm a small business and probably, I don't know about everybody else, but a significant amount of the information that you shared with us, which was phenomenal. I wish I had a bigger organization. One time I did. So why why is Microsoft forcing us into 365? Uh, again, I don't know about everybody else, but probably 80% of the information in here is not pertinent to my needs. So that's a great, great question. Um, what I would say is number one, it's, you know, by making it right, for everyone, right? It's giving everybody all the tools that they need for it. And they're creating ways that they can update it much more effectively, make it much more secure mm -hmm. and give you much more that you can do. Um, you mentioned like 85% is doesn't apply to you, right? Most people only use about 5% of a program, right? The people with real strong power users might use 10%. So why the other 90%? It's because we don't all use the same 10% or same 5% or same 1%. 
So the key thing is what is, and what I help companies do is it's figuring out what's the percent, what do you need? What's the one thing that you need that's going to help you? One or two things. You don't need everything. But the problem, the hard part is that there's so much stuff, it's, everything gets lost. So you, you, need to, you need to know what you can do, what's possible, and then you can get things done. The other thing that I noticed with a lot of software companies, sorry about that, is that as a software vendor, providing our software as a service, which most applications are these days, it makes it easier for the manufacturer or the developer of that software to provide support for a large group of, or a wide variant audience. So right now, we have almost 365. Before, I could just use Alpha or Word or Excel individually. Now, when I use Office 365, literally, I have everything. So where before, I had to buy certain options or only use certain things and pay for those things and upgrade them annually and make sure they're updated. From the manufacturer's point of view, it's a lot easier for us to do it this way. And when I update it, it's updated for everybody. So I don't have to worry about your version of your operating system, whether you're on uh, Windows or Apple or anything like that, or how I'm going to update and support all those different operating systems. Today, software is a service. And with that, you're ensured that every time you open up that application, it is going to be, as long as the updates are done on your local device, the best it can be. And you have all the features available and you use what you need. What bothers me more about uh, Microsoft is the fact that they keep upgrading the system and you get used to using it one way and then all of a sudden it, you check it again the next day and it, it's changed, completely changed the, the look of it. That's what bothers me more than anything. In keeping with that comment, John, uh, my computer was just upgraded and the search engines that I had to find contacts or old emails has been changed to, you know, a, a system that I find so uneasy to use. Um, you know, all of a sudden, there's just one little thing up in the top of my computer that says search here, whereas I used to have a you know, off to the right, a, a line typed in what you want, and I could just even begin to type it and it'll come up. Now all of a sudden I, I can't even copy and paste into it if, I, if I'm if i looking for something. Yeah, it, it's just, I don't know, it just, it just seems you know, crazy. You know, it's just an upgrade and all of a sudden it changed. Hey, Robert. Yes. Robert, I have one question. It's kind of basic, I guess, but the first quarter of this year, my company, who's not a small company, went to Teams, and anybody who was considered important enough, their input was put on it, so you didn't have a choice. Um, the trouble is, is that since I and one other person are responsible for most contracts being signed in the company, we had to get input from every other department in our company. Now, I don't really want to know what procurement's doing. I don't want to know what the warehouse is doing. I don't really care about uh, the administrators and how they're going to, you know, assign work. But this was all flowing through Teams. Is there a way to filter out what you don't need on Teams? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely ways to do it. So what um, you have to look at specifically what you want to accomplish with it and and how the teams are set up and things like that. So yes, you can, but it really again have to look at it specifically to see how it's being used and who's doing what and what you need to see what you don't and you know where where you are and where you know what groups you're in or not in right maybe you can be taken out of certain teams so that you just don't have these posts that you don't need or care about right so there's different ways to to accomplish it all right because john you should right. probably do a team meeting with robert either after this or a later session maybe he can share or you guys can share screens and you can actually help you through that guys what we all need is Bob Cross credit and a spray can or something like that that we can use every day. Okay, that's for sure. Um, well, Bob comes over to my house and he says, I said, I'm having a problem with this uh, Outlook. He said, oh, it's simple. One, two, three, and it's done. And, and you know, once he shows you how to do it, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's good. Yeah. But uh, the, getting to that the point. The thing is, it's figuring out the one or two things that you can, if you can find one or two things that you can do better where you're spending a lot of your time wasting time, or we, a way we can get to your clients quicker, 
again, using that, that tool to follow up with contacts quicker, I made so many more appointments so quickly. It made such a difference overnight. I'm sure it did. Over, over, overnight that I'd have, I'd have, I met 12, 12 people to breakfast. Before I got home from Plainview to Port Jeff, I had two meetings. Another one, somebody booked it at lunchtime and another one at the end of the day, right? The tool allowed them to get it to it when they were you know, comfortable, when they got to the email at the time. And again, because I got out to them so quickly, it was top of mind. They remembered me. The quicker you touch somebody after you meet them, they're going to remember you. Just think, they met a lot of people too. So if you don't connect quickly, you're going to get forgotten. Yeah. Somebody asked if way. we could have a, a, a specific meeting or event on how to use Teams and uh, Power Automate. And that is possible. So we'll talk to Robin and see about setting up a, a, a specific workshop for both or individually on those two um, actions within uh, August 36. So, and uh, just one last thing, I, I added in the, on the chat a link. Um, so you can click on the link and book an appointment. Uh, we could have a call. It's, it'll set up a video meeting call. We can click right, right in and connect. Um, and also, I didn't mention, right now, because of the COVID uh, thing, there's a promotion that we're able to get now through Microsoft licenses for Office 365 for uh, anyone and everyone in your company for no cost for the next six months. That's fantastic. Well, so that's if you're not using it now, um, you should consider getting it. Um, even if you don't you decide not to use it, we can get it, turn it on, you can take a look at it, you can try it. And again, it's for everybody in the company for the entire you know, Teams uh, platform and Office 365 and Power Automate and the forms and all the tools um, are there. That's so great. Um, it's a great opportunity to take advantage and, and, and try that out. And any license you don't need, we just turn them off at the end if, we, if you don't, uh, don't need them. That's great. Uh, so, uh, Matt, do you want to uh, end the meeting now, or? Well, if anybody uh, has any final comments. Um, oh, Rob, would you recommend upgrading? I'm so torn between this home edition that I've had for a thousand years that serves most of my purposes and going on to, like, I guess the Microsoft business, I guess, so professional. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I would do it if, again, just by learning how to automate, and again, you don't have to learn how to do it. If you want, we could set, set it up and get it done for you in, in, in an hour or two, depending on, again, what you want to accomplish. And that's going to make such a difference in your time if you, if you address the right things, right? It's figuring out what do you need, what things can we do and automate the stuff you hate doing, the things that take a lot of time, things that I wish were done, but they don't get done, right? Or setting up ability for your clients to contact you whether it's through Teams or even just say, sharing OneDrive and sharing so they can put stuff in and you can collaborate, even just through Outlook. You don't even have to use Teams, you can use what they call groups. And when you send a, add a message to your group, even if say you want your, your client that you're working with, any files or documents you have for that client will be right at the bottom of the email. There'll be a link for them to get it because they, they'll have rights to it. They, you share it as a group, they will have rights to it there. So you can easily share documents right there quickly and easily. So even they don't have to go look for that proposal you sent to them. It's right at the bottom of the next email you sent to follow up with them. There's a link to get to it. So, right, so very powerful everybody. ways you can do things, you know, but everybody's business is different. So it's a matter of figuring out how you can do things. And like I said, we can find one or two things that will make a big impact in what you do. And again, you. if you have a team of people, times it by how many people you have, the amount of impact you can make. I want to remind everybody to make a copy of the chat, get the link to uh, Robert's calendar. Um, and if you have any uh, specific questions or whatever, you can either send them to us or uh, to Robert, and we'll make sure that uh, we address them. Um, and I do believe that uh, based on the power that both Teams and the Power Automate can provide to every single one of us as individual business owners, we should uh, and will consider doing a specific workshop for both of those particular uh, functions. All right, everybody. So you, Robert. you did a great job, Robert. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Robin. Okay. Good seeing you there. Contact me, anybody. Job,
and 